Hey, I'm Alex Kalaskov from 4TG.com and uh, this is the second part of a review of Sony RX10 Mark II camera, this camera. Uh, you know, on the first review I told you a little bit about it, I showed you uh, some of the, uh, you know, features. Uh, on this review I already spent, uh, well, about two weeks uh, with the camera, so I can tell you much more uh, about what I learned. I will show you image quality that I shoot in the studio, you know, camera on a tripod with strobe lighting so everything was precise comparing to Sony A7 II Mark II uh, with, with uh, 70 to 100 millimeter uh, Sony lens, you know, that uh, Zeiss lens. And uh, we will see how it works. Actually, I have camera connected to laptop, so you will see what is going on in this camera. I'll, I'll show you, you know, focus tracking, all that kind of thing. So be with me for 10 more minutes. Uh, before, let me uh, tell you what I really like on this uh, Sony. You know, uh, electronic is great. Whatever it, it's doing, uh, focus tracking, it's awesome. It, kind of, it can track your face, uh, uh, it can track any subject, uh, even if you manually select it, uh, and it moves, you know, across the frame, it will track it. Uh, it has a registration, you know, face registration, same as uh, A7, uh, where it will track particular face if it will recognize it. Uh, let's say if your child uh, surrounded by other kids and you want to make sure that your child in the focus when you shoot them, so it will kind of um, will try to get uh, face of a particular human. When it works, of course. Uh, however, one thing I notice is different from this uh, to uh, this camera, from Sony RX10 to uh, Alpha 7, that that face tracking works a little bit different. On Alpha 7, on A7, when it sees the face, it automatically does exposure compensation to make sure that the face uh, looks nice. You know, that situations when you, let's say, shoot somebody in, uh, uh, in front of something bright, let's say, whatever, bright sky, uh, clouds, uh, whatever, and you're shooting a little bit from uh, the bottom, and face, usually, because we don't, uh, well, many of us don't use um, spot exposure uh, metering, right? The face will look dark, just because surrounding is too bright. So you need to dial, uh, that's what I was doing on Canon all the time. Uh, I need to dial exposure compensation to make sure that the face is not underexposed. Uh, and, uh, well, usually the sky and, uh, you know, something which is blurry uh, can be a little bit overexposed and it looks great. So Sony A7 and then 7 Mark II uh, does it automatically. It's so cool, you know, you shoot in something, uh, some landscape, it looks great. Then your kid or your child, uh, again, my experience, are coming in front of the camera, you snap in and boom, it automatically brightens everything, maybe like one, two uh, f-stop, uh, exposure compensation, and uh, the portrait looks great, face is bright and uh, normally exposed. This little guy doesn't do this. I don't know why they turned off uh, that feature, but anyway, it tracks the face, focus will be there, but uh, no exposure compensation for you. And talking about photography part of this camera, because it will be more video uh, on this review, I can tell you, well, camera is great, but image quality, again, comparing to Sony Alpha 7, which cost, um, well, with the lens, it cost more. With the lens, it cost more than just $2,000, right? But still, just a camera without lens, it cost about the same amount of money. RX is really, well, it doesn't deliver that image quality. That's for me, again, guys, uh, I'm giving you my personal opinion, okay? That's the only thing that I have, my personal opinion on this. So I was looking for better image quality. However, Knowing that the sensor, sensor on this camera is so tiny compared to full frame sensor, that probably it's doing an amazing job at giving hardware. Because if you look at sensor of this guy, this is this, right? This is full frame 35 millimeter sensor. And you know, let's put it this way. And you know the uh, image quality difference between 35 millimeter format and let's say medium format, right? It was always like, hey guys, Hasselblad, you know, Mamiya, all that kind of uh, phase one. 
you know, they have much better image quality because the uh, sensor is larger. So here is the sensor of uh, Hasselblad, okay? It's about two times larger, right? And yeah, there is a visible difference in image quality. Unfortunately, I can't show you the sensor of this guy <laughs> unless I break it. Uh, lens is uh, fixed, but let me show you this. This is 35 millimeter sensor, okay? And this is size of this sensor. They call it one inch sensor, but uh, it's basically uh, 13 millimeters by 8.8 .8 millimeters. So you see how small it is. It's like you can fit more than six sensor, uh, this little sensor in, in the place where it will be one sensor from A7, Sony A7. And you know, on that tiny little sensor, again, this is RX10. This is Sony A7, full frame sensor. There is no way to get uh, details. Uh, let me show you this. Uh, again, image, click this link uh, if you want to uh, check the normal image, not uh, on the video. Uh, it's posted on the first part of this review from this camera. Uh, this is Sony A7 and this is RX10. You may not see on, on the video, switch to HD if you want, but basically it's everything besides little difference uh, in uh, megapixel, 20 vs 24, but it's like everything is blurry. It, it's, it may be the lens, but I don't care the lens, I cannot change the lens, so I kind of get in what I get. Everything is quite blurry. It's a perfect shot, perfect focus uh, on a perfect uh, environment in the studio with strobe lighting uh, where uh, there was no shaking. Uh, at ISO 100, so everything was uh, set really well. Uh, this is my main concern at uh, the photography camera. So now let me show you uh, how it looks like on the camera itself. So focus tracking really fast, really great. Uh, here it is. It tracks faces. You see what it's doing? Boom, I get two faces, as you can see. And uh, let's zoom. Let's say uh, we zoom in, we got focus there. We zoom in, we got focus there. And boom, immediate focus here. After zooming, focus there. And it sees the face very fast. And of course, stabilization, optical stabilization is really cool, okay? You see where it's not seeing anything, it's kind of trying to get a focus. When it will be white wall, well, it will struggle. Yeah, it's hard. No way it can set a focus. Maybe it can set it there, no. Okay, here we go. So, normal performance, really good performance, I would say. Camera cost uh, $1,200, uh, well, $1,600, right? Uh, so, it's not a cheap camera for point and shoot, uh, but it's nice. Okay, what else uh, you may like in this camera, what you want to check? Uh, the zoom. Zoom is, you need to rotate it to get zoom. So about half from full 360 degree rotation will give you the whole zoom, which is cool, not a problem on this. Uh, manual focus though, there is a switch to get a manual focus. And uh, manual focus now, our zooming dial on the lens uh, works as a manual focus. You see what it's doing? It immediately switched to magnification, so we can set a focus. And it also supposed to highlight contrast areas for us, but this is I half press uh, and it switched to normal view. But it's not really well, it's a little bit highlighting. For, so. Focus, it's okay, but uh, let me ask you this, guys. If you shoot video with this, I'm not shooting much video. Uh, and you know, when you put this camera on the rig with uh, that uh, follow focus thing, when you want to shoot manually on the manual focus, how much rotation it will give you, you know, uh, that full 360 degree rotation. Oh, actually, no, it's okay. So it should be fine, right, to have set a manual focus. I just was thinking that maybe uh, too much movements and you can't really do uh, full rotation with that, uh, you know, uh, follow focus on the rigs. 
and zoom is here, right? Zoom is on the other button. So this is how it works. Let's switch back to uh, focus, lock focus. Again, works really cool. Macro, this lens can get a focus really close. You see how close I am to the uh, keyboard? It's a macro, and this is awesome. Uh, let's zoom in, and still, cool focus. Can it get there? No. So it's not one-to-one -one macro, but really close to this, which is pretty good considering that you can place uh, other lens here, right? So this is our focus. You see, it's pretty fast. Boom, immediately. Very, very precise and fast focus. Uh, let me show you how menu uh, items looks like, you know, what kind of things we have here on the menu. So, uh, all kind of things, well, that's probably uh, very similar to Sony A7 that you have. Uh, what can be cool is... Uh, ND filter, right? This is something which you don't have, and uh, it has ND filter. Uh, you can, well, it's usually on auto mode, but uh, you can turn it on if needed. Uh, well, all this HDR, it doesn't ma matter. I mean, dynamic range, because when you shoot RAW, it's uh, all can be done uh, inside, um, inside the Adobe Camera con Converter. Okay, what else? Drive mode. Uh, file format. So this is our file formats, right? This, this, yeah, it kind of saying that it, it should be a really fast uh, SD card. And by the way, I tried, uh, you know, uh, 1000X Alexar card. It didn't work. 3000 worked. So <laughs> it should be really good uh, card. Uh, all kind of formats here and. Uh, Settings, uh, this is interesting. A camera has uh, 30p at 100 megabyte and uh, 24, right, at uh, this settings. Let's say if we switch from 4K to uh, this format, okay, now we have 120p, okay, 120p uh, at uh, 100 megabit per second or megabyte, uh, which is really cool because you can slow it without losing any quality. Uh, four times, right? So let's say 30p. <laughs> Somebody lost the shoe. And uh, it's not like a slow shutter, uh, slow, slow motion shooting when you have only two seconds and you kind of need to get that specific moment uh, to capture ten, two seconds of that. Here you can capture the whole thing and only a uh, few other, well, few parts of that video you can uh, slow motion if needed, right? So it's cool. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, this HFR settings. You see it can be 60p, 30 or 24. Uh, at 24p, uh, this is kind of maximum s slowness. <laughs> uh, because if you shoot at 240, it will be 10x. You see 10x slow motion. If you switch to 480, it will be 20, and uh, this it will be 40. What I can tell you, it's great at 240 FPS, full HD. Here we're losing, it's not full HD, it's about half at full HD. And uh, 960, well, I wouldn't call it usable. Okay, and uh, let's say if uh, we're going to shoot something here, how does it look like? We switch into HFR on our little dial, okay, now focus, well, I'm not sure about our focus, does it set a focus? I hope so, so what we're doing, we're pressing first OK button, 
it says preparing, okay, and then we can shoot a movie. So buffering, two seconds, boom. Now it will record for 20 seconds, right, 10x. And uh, the rest will be 40 seconds or 80 seconds at the slowest uh, possible uh, frame rate. You see it's kind of doing all this. So great camera, great video capability, but if you take a look at the picture from this camera comparing to this camera to Sony L uh, A7 with uh, this lens, right now it will be on this video, kind of outdoor part of this test. Um, for me, you know, this picture, picture from this, the video from this, looks so much better. This video is from Sony A7 Mark II. Okay, uh, just for comparison. Okay, so this is Sony RX10 Mark II uh, footage, uh, full HD, exactly the same uh, distance, exactly the same uh, uh, file format as we just had uh, with uh, Sony A7 Mark II. Just for you, it's f.2 actually. Uh, the lens set, the aperture. Uh, you see the difference? Uh, judge yourself. Again, larger sensor. Depth of field is because of this is much shallower. It so much nicely separates subject from the background. So, I mean, this is awesome. But because of this tiny sensor, it... I'm going to return it, okay? I'm not saying it's bad camera but it didn't work for me for what I was thinking, okay? I was thinking to have camera in my pocket to shoot my, you know, kids, outdoors, all kind of stuff uh, with one lens, to shoot nice video in studio, some footage or outside. And since we have Sony Alpha 7, you know, it costs similar money. This guy, unfortunately, won't work for me. Again, guys, I am not saying this is a bad camera. Uh, let me uh, show you another thing, okay? What about this camera? This is camcorder, okay? And uh, if, let's say, I really need the camera, video camera, this guy costs exactly the same amount of money as this, $1,300. It has the same sensor, one each sensor, this little one, but for camcorder it's great. It also has very similar, well, same processor, uh, 12x optical zoom, probably almost the same lens, I would say. Uh, well, check it out. I don't know, this is interesting. If, if I need video camera, I'll get this one. If I need photo camera, I need this one. If I need both video and photo, I still will get Sony Alpha 7 Mark II. So this is it. Watch uh, footage outside with this camera and uh, subscribe to 40G channel. It will be more reviews coming soon. As usually, my personal opinions on things that uh, I love or things uh, that I don't like. And uh, well, I'll see you soon already. Have a good one. Bye. Hi, this is Alex Kalaskov from 40G.com. Okay, now you'll recognize me. And also slow motion. Uh, personal reviews with my personal opinion and uh, and here's the conclusion no okay that would conclusion как она будет вообще already uh, so this is was the uh, this was the test блин ладно я уже все сказал наверное,